Number one, the gate. I was listening to some scary stories about drives down country roads, and I decided to tell mine. One thing that I have noticed in these stories, and which has been true of my own experiences driving down these roads, is that often they are very narrow, and sometimes you have to drive a really long way before you're able to find a place to turn around. Some rural roads I have been on have gone for miles without coming to a driveway or any other turning point. I doubt that people who have not experienced driving on these roads would likely even believe that they exist. However, I have lived in areas where dirt roads wind almost endlessly up into the hills. I had my own experience when I was 13 years old. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Why would a 13 year old be driving a car? But where I grew up, that wasn't unusual. This was in the early 1970s too. Hell, my mom learned to drive when she was 11. You weren't going to come across police on these roads. So why did the driver's license really matter? Hell, the police all knew everyone around there anyway. And they weren't too likely to give us a ticket. They were all driving before they were old enough too. When you turned off the main road, onto the dirt road that led to my house, there was a really small convenience store there. My dad sent me off to get him some beer. And yeah, the store owner was my aunt. And she knew I was getting it for my dad, so she gave the beer to me. I picked up the beer pretty quickly. and figured my dad was probably pretty drunk as it was. I thought I'd take the car and go driving a little while. So I drove onto the main road for a while, and turned off onto a country road that I had never been on before. It was usually pretty fun to do this. Find new places, you know. Well, I had thought that the country road that I lived on was thin. This one was barely large enough to keep the car on the road, and the woods were really thick. The further I went down the road, the more the road seemed to narrow and the more it seemed like the trees were converging onto the road. More than once, a branch from a tree scraped against the window of my car as I drove along, and this road was frustrating too. I had to drive slowly because of the twists and turns in it. Also, what the hell was I supposed to do if another car came down the road? There was nowhere to turn around. I also had this horrible thought that perhaps this road didn't lead anywhere any longer. What would I do if it dead-ended? What if it used to lead somewhere but the forest grew over it? And worst of all, what if it led somewhere that someone didn't want me to see? My dad always told me that deep in the hills that there were people who you never really wanted to meet up with. I didn't come across any cars but I did eventually come to a driveway. The problem, however, was that the driveway was gated off. I didn't see a house, though, so I guess it could have just been a side road that led off the side of the hill. But it was either continue driving down the road, or use this driveway or side road to turn around. Nervously, I got out of the car. The gate was not locked, but it had a bolt in it. I undid the bolt and opened the gate up. I kept looking around me, trying to see if anyone was around, and if they had discovered what I was doing. Getting into my car, I turned around, and got my car out of the gate. I guess I should have just gone straight home, but I felt that I should go out and close the gate. My car, however, was now facing the opposite direction, so the only light I had to see by was my tail lights. But I felt obligated. So I got out, and went over to close the gate. When I had my hand on the gate, I heard the unmistakable sound of a shotgun cocking. I had fired enough of them to know. I looked up, and by the meager red light from my tail lights, I noticed someone standing not too far away. The red light made them look really freaky, and he was definitely holding the shotgun. As I watched him, He lowered the gun and pointed it right at me. A lot of people instantly freeze when a gun is pointed at them. 
I didn't. I let go of the gate and ran my butt back to the car. No sooner than I slammed the door did I hear the shotgun blast. It didn't hit me or the car. I took off as fast as I could down the narrow and dark road. The ride back home was terrifying, even scarier than it had been on the way there. I didn't calm down until I was back on the paved road and headed home. I told my dad what happened. Honestly, he was just upset it took me so long to get him his beer. Number 2. Abandoned Building I grew up out in the country. My family was from a really low-income area. Lots of us were on welfare, had food stamps. Even when I was young, so many of my relatives were always not working. It really wasn't until I was much older that I realized it was normal for people to even have a job. The world's a much different place now. I started chewing tobacco and even drinking beer around the age of 14. It didn't seem weird to me because everyone was doing it. I also started hanging out at my friends' houses and doing the same there. A lot of times, I hung out at my friend Brandon's house. He lived out on the same ridge as I did. My mom had given me a ride to his place on this particular night, but it wasn't unusual for me to walk back and forth. It was easily at least a five mile walk through the hills along a long, gravel road. I'd walked it both in the day and in the night. This happened on a night where me and my buddies were all hanging out at Brandon's house in his basement, drinking beer and playing video games. Of course, back then it was the Atari 2600. I actually ended up getting pretty drunk that night. And that was my downfall, actually. Normally, I would get drunk, pass out, and then go home the next day. But on this night, me and Brandon got into a stupid, drunken argument. I got angry at him and stormed out of his house at about 2 a.m. Being drunk, I stayed angry for quite a while. By the time I began to finally get over it, though, I was too embarrassed to go back to the house. So I decided the best thing to do was just walk home. It was a pretty hot summer night. And thank God the wind was blowing really hard and it kept me from working up too much of a sweat. It might have been the alcohol or something, but I was getting a bit nervous for some reason as I was walking home. It was a creepy night, like something from a movie. The sky was overcast, but there was a full moon, and the clouds were moving fast. They would cover, and then uncover the moon quickly. Now most houses on the ridge were set on hills, and they were all dark when I came by them. There were also some older abandoned small buildings set closer to the road. If you've ever driven down an old country road, you've probably seen a rotted, gray, dilapidated small building. I was approaching one. It was set a few yards off of the road. It's a building I'd seen and passed by many, many times. Only this time, there was something different. There was a light on inside it. Just seeing the light in the house made me apprehensive as I was walking down the road. If someone was doing something inside the house, they were close enough to the road to see me as I was passing by. It was nearly 3 a.m. by that time, and if someone was doing something in an abandoned small building in the middle of the country, I couldn't imagine it was something good. I walked to the far side of the road and tried my best to walk quietly past the building. Even though I didn't want to get the attention of anyone in that shack, I was also quite curious about what may have been going on inside it. As I got closer and closer, I still couldn't see anyone inside the building. I actually walked off the side of the road into the grass, and I looked. Finally, when I began passing by, I saw movement in the building. I was about to get a closer look when I heard the most horrifying and blood-curdling scream I'd ever heard in my entire life. It nearly knocked me off of my feet. Then I saw two of the biggest, scariest-looking country boys I'd ever seen in my life move past the window. I thought one of them looked out 
and saw me, but I wasn't sure. I ran and ran, just took off down the street. I had never been so horrified in my life, and I don't know, I, I was scared. I, 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 I couldn't look back because I knew if I did, I would see those guys running right after me. I just ran. When my sides began cramping, I kept running. When my feet were hurting, I kept running. I ran until I made it home and immediately threw up in the yard. I don't know what I witnessed. I don't want to know. I never walked past that building again at night. I did walk past it during the day, and several times I wanted to go in and see if there was anything in there, but I never did. I was scared, horrified at what I might find. Number 3. Following. I was pretty excited when I finally got my driver's license. My family was great, and they bought me a new car. Of course, I took advantage of this and drove all over the place whenever I could. It was a convertible Mustang. It got me a lot of popularity in school. Everyone was wanting to go for a ride. Unfortunately, this car also got me the ire of this guy named Billy. He had never really liked me much. My dad was a doctor, and my mom was a writer and we did have things pretty comfortable. His family was less well off, and he seemed to hold that against me, so when I got the new car, it just made him dislike me even more. He had a car too, but it was a beater with a heater as people called it. I never made fun of him or anything for it though. Hell, it was a car, and the point of a car was to get you somewhere, but he still resented me. One night, after a high school football game, I decided to take a few friends home before heading home myself. When I left the school, I noticed Billy's car pulled out behind me. I didn't think too much about it, although I did keep my eye on him. I dropped off two of my friends in town. He followed me the entire way. When I stopped to let them out, he stopped behind me. And when I started back up, he followed me. Billy made absolutely no bones about the fact that he was following me. It was almost as if he wanted me to know. The third friend of mine lived further out of town, on a rural route. I figured Billy wouldn't want to drive that far out, so I went to take my buddy home. But sure enough, when I pulled out onto the route, Billy followed me. It was nerve-wracking. I hadn't even thought about calling the police earlier. And by this time it was too late. I wasn't going to get any bars at all out on that country route. Billy followed us really closely. It was scary because of the curves on the road. And many times I was scared to hit the brakes at all because he would have rear-ended me. I was actually surprised that he hadn't done that on purpose. He was clearly up to no good. Either trying to scare us or sincerely wanting to hurt me. Fortunately for me... I was driving a brand new Mustang. My friend had a long driveway up to his house, so the moment I turned onto the driveway, I floored it and left Billy way out in the dust. We got to the house, ran out of the car, and into the house before he was able to get all the way up to the driveway. I wasn't really sure what to do, or if we should call the police. I mean, sure, he was following us, but he hadn't done anything yet. But when I watched him get out of his car and walk towards mine, I told my buddy to call the cops. I wasn't sure what Billy was doing and didn't figure it out until I saw him light a match and throw it on my car, which caught on fire. I found out later he poured gasoline on the car. My friend's dad was up and went and got his rifle while my friend called 911. By the time my friend's dad got outside though, Billy was in his car and leaving. I wanted to put the car fire out, but his dad told me to not go anywhere near the car and just get back in the house. Billy's fire was only on the top of the car, and it destroyed my paint job, the convertible top, and the interior, and burned the hell out of my frame. But the fire went out, 
without getting to the engine or any flammable fluids. If Billy had wanted the car to explode, he didn't do a very good job. The last time I ever saw Billy was in court, and he was being sentenced. His petty attitude screwed up his life pretty badly. I had full coverage insurance. So when you look at his actions, he gained nothing by being a jackass. He went to jail. I got my car fixed as new. Oh well. Hey all, Killer Orange Cat here. This video should be posted only a few hours after my last one, so I can't update on any of the changes in the GoFundMe. However, as usual, I will include the link in case anyone wants to donate or share the link on social media. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, please consider hitting the subscribe button below, or use the icon of Ichigo that will appear at the end of this closing. Feel free to leave some comments to let me know what you think of the video, and consider sharing it with someone you think might enjoy it. You can always follow Ichigo and myself on Facebook and Twitter. If you have a story you'd like narrated on Killer Orange Cat, please email it to the address included in the description. Hope you're all having a great weekend, and please don't forget to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed, because you never know where a killer orange cat might be hiding. Good night.